Eric, I have thought this uh, was a fascinating issue since the advent of social media and it continues to be so. And I think it continues to get more and more convoluted as, as more and more people um, use these platforms and they become just a day-to-day -day part of people's lives instead of a novelty that a handful of nerds are using. And uh, you've done a lot of writing in the last um, couple of weeks and, and in general uh, about usernames um, and the fact that they are different from domain names and yet still have trademark protection overtones that come into play. Uh, current post of yours is called Twitter's trademark policy sucks. Tell us why. Yeah, it's all about choosing the right title, right, Denise? If you look at the uh, an alternate title, I think it's um, how to exploit USPTO and Twitter trademark loopholes to derail a competitor. And that's certainly mm -hmm. what what happened in this case. So Twitter, yes, their trade, their trademark policy sucks, but there's, there's several, uh, you know, weak links in this chain. So starting from the very beginning, let's take a look at the, the trademark office itself. The patent and trademark office is, you know, divided up into patents on one side and trademarks on the other. Uh, you know, we do both at, uh, at my firm. And, you know, in order to become a member of the patent bar, you have to take a special exam, you have to have a special degree, blah, blah, blah. And when you're filing patents, you have to have, a, a, you know, a security certificate and you have to log on and there's this annoying Java applet. And anyway, it's very difficult to get things uh, online. There's a good amount of security there, which is great. Now, contrast that to the trademark, the trademark side, of the, side house, of the house, where you where do not have not to... Have to have a special degree or take any sort of exam. And the, the, the trademark uh, process of filing and amending applications is completely open and completely unsecured. So anybody at any time, just by putting uh, a name between slashes, could go to the trademark office uh, website and cancel their competitor's trademark. You could just you could just file an express abandonment of any uh, uh, of any trademark, and there's no validation, no security uh, in that process at all. And that's just one example of of many. So uh, what let me make sure I understand that, since I don't do a lot of trademark law. Um, you don't get any kind of notification from the trademark mock office if it's about to cancel your trademark because someone, had, some competitor of yours has come in and decided, well, I'd rather have that trademark. I'm going to cancel theirs. Well, after, uh, uh, after any filing, the, uh, there's notification, but it's sent out to the email address that's uh, associated uh, with the filing. And mm -hmm. after, a, after, a, after a trademark has uh, registered, the uh, the trademark office considers um, power of attorney to have ceased, so anybody can make a filing uh, on a registered trademark. I, I should blog about that at some point because it's a pretty big security hole, and I'm surprised it hasn't been um, exploited yet. But the mm -hmm. the security hole, or I'd say the flaw in the trademark office's uh, system uh, in this case. Uh, you know, relates to, you know, what happens when you don't have uh, a perfect fact pattern. In a, in, in a perfect world, um, a startup would be the, the, the first to use their trademark. They would be the first to file their trademark application. And they would be the first to have the registration. Um, but we don't live in the ideal world. Welcome to the real world, Neo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, to quote the Matrix. And in the real world, there's always something that's a little uh, out of order. So um, uh, in the case that I blogged about, which in, involves uh, one of Clock Tower Law's uh, clients, and I had um, the client's permission to, to blog about this and, and talk about it publicly because, you know, uh, our, our client is the, uh, is the senior user um, of... Uh, of the trademark, they they have the valid trademark. They have the the valid uh, senior use, and they had um, not just uh, Twitter but other social networks um, attacked by a, a junior user who happened to uh, win the race 
to the trademark office. So, you know, the way that, uh, the way that our client, which is the, the yarn addict of New Jersey, you know, found out about this is they, they got a, both a cease and desist letter from the, uh, from the junior user and started to get takedown notices of all their social media sites, uh, which really uh, derailed their, their business. And, and the reason that this was allowed to happen is that when you file a, a trademark application, you also have to submit proof that you are using that trademark uh, correctly in commerce. That proof of use is called uh, a specimen. But let's say that you started using it uh, like a year before or two months before or whatever. You don't have to prove use back to your uh, alleged date. You can just allege an earlier use, submit proof of current use, and you're, and you're given the earlier date. And that's, that's precisely what happened uh, in this case. The, uh, the junior user uh, used the uh, domain name registration date as use in commerce, but that was not, in fact, the use of commerce state. It's very unusual that you would register a domain name and launch an online store and launch a brick-and-mortar store all on the same date. And when we sort of unscrambled the eggs, we're like, okay, junior user registered the domain name first, uh, junior user filed the uh, trademark application first, but senior user had uh, use in, uh, in, in online stores first, senior user had use in brick and mortar stores first, and we can prove it all. And here are all the links. And we, we uh, were you know, very much on the, on the defensive and trying to prevent a bad situation from getting much worse. So I wrote, I wrote letters to all the social networks saying, you know, if you've taken the site down, here's the facts. We're going to petition to cancel the, the other trademark. Uh, if you get a takedown request, you know, please don't honor it. Please restore the account. Or at the very least, uh, let the system uh, determine who has the right to use this trademark. Uh, and every other social network said that's fine, uh, with the exception of, uh, of Twitter. And we are... Uh, I'm not sure how many months into it, uh, almost six months into this uh, dispute, and the senior user's uh, account is, is, is still offline. And uh, e every single filing that I've made with, with Twitter has, has either been ignored or just responded to with, uh, with boilerplate. And I, I feel that the, uh, this court of public opinion is sort of our... Uh, our, our, our last hope, because there is a very, very broken policy that, that Twitter has, uh, and uh, it was just, just waiting for a fact pattern like this uh, to be exposed. Well here, well, here it is. This is the nightmare scenario where a senior right. user ha has, their, has their account offline for months, mm -hmm. and Twitter just completely ignores it. Well, this is so sad. So while you've been speaking, I pulled up your client's account. It's called the Yarn Attic, A T T I C dot com. They're a yarn store uh, supplying crochet and knitting supplies in New Jersey. Uh, they have cute little sheep all over their site. Uh, but when you go down to click on their um, join our community, Facebook, Twitter, and goodness, what's that one? Probably Ravelry. Ravelry, Ravelry yes. yes. The um, the yarn social network. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> but when you go to their uh, their Twitter account, it's been suspended, and that is because someone. It used to be the yarn attic. Apparently, um, that account is suspended. So they've chosen not to just find themselves another Twitter handle in this instance. And and who who is their um, Who's the person who went in and, and did all this to them, Eric? So uh, the, uh, the original uh, complainant or plaintiff uh, is a, a company called Yarn Attic uh, mm -hmm. of North Carolina. So it's, it's Yarn Attic of North Carolina, which is the, the junior user, versus right. the Yarn Attic of New Jersey, uh, which is the senior user. 
and um, yarn attic of, of North Carolina, which is now uh, Winston Wool. Um, you know, they're the ones that uh, that filed the trademark on yarn attic first. Uh, they got a registration on it and then used that registration to start taking down the social network sites of the yarn attic of New Jersey. Um, and so there's definitely lessons in here for, for startups. Um, you know, certainly if uh, the yarn attic of New Jersey had uh, filed a trademark application sort of uh, early on when it started doing interstate commerce, this never would have happened. All of these trademark disputes are so, so fact-based. And once you just line up the facts chronologically, trademark lawyer, which now you're getting to the chronological lineup, trademark lawyers can see this and they say, oh, I see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, here's the senior user. Oh, here's the secondary user. Oh, yes. Well, that trademark registration is invalid and is, it is subject to being uh, canceled at the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board, which is what we did. We filed a petition to cancel, and that registration is now is now canceled. But the, their trademark policy, Twitter's trademark policy, is so broken that uh, that absent having a, a, a federal registration, they are not going to listen to us. It's, even though this is, I mean, this trademark is uh, probably another six months from registering. And so, what the senior user is supposed to wait a full year with their account suspended before uh, Twitter is going to respond? It's it's mind-numbingly, uh, bafflingly frustrating, mm -hmm. and and I have. Go ahead, Denise. I'm wondering, strategically, from the standpoint of protecting and and uh, regaining their trademark, um, is it advantageous for them just to not have a Twitter presence until they iron that out, or should they just you know decide to have some other Twitter handle in the meantime? Well, I think at uh, at this point, having having won the uh, the trademark battle at the uh, uh, at the trademark office, um, mm -hmm. it, it becomes almost a matter of uh, of pride. Plus, there's a lot of mm -hmm. uh, uh, historical uh, energy built up into that account. I mean, presumably that that account and all of those tweets uh, are still there. Otherwise, right. it would it would report as as deleted. Um, and certainly, they're they're shifting their focus to. Uh, Ravelry and Facebook and Instagram and other social networks mm -hmm. who, by the way, I think it was Instagram that responded in nine days. They said, yep, our bad. Your account's back online. So it's nine days wow. Instagram versus what? Five, six months for Twitter. Wow. And uh, I got no evidence that any that any lawyer has actually read or responded to any of the filings on this case. So honestly, if anybody knows a human being that works at Twitter, you can't find their yeah. address, you can't find their phone number, you can't find their, their fax number. It's, uh, it's, and I've had very good success with Facebook, Twitter, other social networks before in similar situations. This is like the nightmare scenario that I, that I, I could imagine, but I never thought would actually, uh, uh, actually happen. You know, hey, I get this question all the time and Emery, you're not practicing yet, but you'll get it too. Once you have that bar card in hand, uh, Alex, I'm sure you probably get the question uh, from people with this kind of dilemma where their social network presence is being messed with in some, in some way, um, just begging me to put them in touch with someone in house at fill in the blank company because they can't reach a human being. Um, and and don't, now don't think I'm always able to um, <laughs> meet that demand. In fact, I hardly <laughs> ever am. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a really really common uh, concern that people people are out there with legitimate um, legal beefs about the way that their username is being dealt with by the company, and they they literally either can't talk to a human being or can't even really get into the process. It's it's a really it's a real issue. So um, I I think you've been going through that here with Twitter. Um, what do you think is going to happen now, Eric? Well, that's a good question. I mean, we're sort of uh, we're sort of running out of, of options. I know certainly that uh, once the registration uh, issues. Um, that's mm -hmm. something that 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 Twitter will uh, will listen to according to their uh, existing policy. Uh, but the fact that the uh, junior user has completely rebranded, 
the the junior user did take on a, a new handle. The old the old handle's gone. Um, you know, I, I don't know what more uh, information is needed to say. Look, you you've suspended the wrong account. You suspended the senior user's account, not the junior mm-hmm. user's account. And and it wouldn't even really be a problem if uh, if Twitter actually followed their policy such as it is. I mean, it's an awful policy, but if they actually followed it, it would have the right outcome in this case. Uh, right. But, th- but they, they've concluded that there was a, quote, clear intent to mislead by the senior user, which I don't, I'm not even sure how that's possible. So, uh, but that's, that's yes. where we're at. 